great to see you here. My name is Luc de Koster, founder of the Koster Academy. And in this video about procurement management, I will look at the key concepts. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button. And every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. What are the key concepts in procurement management? Now, procurement is one of the most vulnerable parts of the project related to legal obligations and penalties. Like I said before, the project manager is not allowed to sign agreement and is not supposed to be a procurement specialist. Nevertheless, the project manager should have a working understanding of contracts. So it's important to understand how these contracts work, how the procurement process works, and when he or she addresses the procurement department, the project manager will understand what to ask and what he or she can get. Now, we have relationships when we have the contracts, the procurement management processes lead to agreements that describe relationships between buyers and sellers. It can be a very simple agreement of a piece of paper stating everything, or it can be very complex. Policies and rules may exist in which roles and responsibilities related to procurement are specified. So you have to see what exists in the company and what you can and can cannot do. Now, complex projects may involve multiple contracts or may have multiple contracts that are active at the same time. And as a project manager, you have to understand how these different contracts influence the project. Now, when you look at the approved supplier or seller list, this is quite interesting to have because procedures and processes can be set up between the different parties, between supplier and seller, as uh, supplier, buyer and seller, that make ordering in a very simple way so that everything is done according to the agreement. Now, when we look at key concepts specifically related to contracts, now, when we have a contract, it must include the different parties. And those parties are typically identified as a buyer and a seller. It's very important to understand that what is not in the contract is not a part of the contract and cannot be enforced. So when you write somewhere, this is not included, well, basically it means that it's not there and you don't have to do it. It should have been written in the contract. Now, when you look at an international environment, now, when you look at contracts, you have to see or understand how the culture and local laws will, in fact, influence the way you deal with contracts. When you're working just in one country, then it's quite easy, but in international companies, that may become quite complex. The purchasing contract contains all the terms and conditions, and it's the team's responsibility to ensure that the procurement office has all the necessary information. There may be different contract formats that are possible. There may be an agreement. Uh, there may be a service level agreement or an SLA. There can be a memorandum of understanding, an MOU or a memorandum of agreement. So there are different elements that can be used and they have each of them their own specific application. The seller who signed the contract can be named di differently. We can talk about a contractor, a vendor, a service provider, or a supplier. The contract also states who becomes the owner of the final contract. So when the work is completed, who becomes owner of these items? For example, a telephone line, you will never be owner of the line. You will lend it from, you will use it for a fee from, for example, the telecom company. So that's about the key concepts related to procurement and contracts. But before you leave, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. 
Thank you and bye bye.